Are you ready? To forgive yourself. I hope that you are in a comfortable area and you have your notes because what I'm about to share with you has never been shared before and will probably change your life. I've have held grudges. I've held grudges with myself. I've held grudges with others. For years, my heart has been closed. This has caused major stress in my life, major anxiety in my life. And I finally realized some things. I finally realized some things. And I let go. My heart is open. The heart opens and closes constantly. The more you focus on your heart, the more you can keep it open. Now, what I want to share with you today is a story. It's a story about, about, it's a tragedy, really. It's a tragic story. And the reason I want to share this with you is because I know that you have a story. I know that you want to forgive yourself for some reason or another. And first, I want to share with you my story because I want to relate to you. I want to let you know that it was hard for me to let go and forgive. I'm not just going to sit here and tell you to forgive yourself because you deserve it. That message is all over the world already. And you already know. But it's hard to do. And you don't do it. So here's my story. Now when I was a kid, I got my driver's license at 16 and I was so excited. So excited to drive all my friends around and it was fantastic, not a care in the world, right? Until one day, one day, after school, a bunch of my friends and I, we were driving along, and I looked out the window. And when I looked back, my life changed forever. I hit a pedestrian and killed him. I hit him with my car, and he flew over the windshield. He vanished. I'm going to describe it for you. It seemed like God had him by the feet and was just smacking him on the windshield. Bam, bam, bam. And he was gone. And there was blood everywhere. And I saw him in my rearview mirror. He had fallen to the ground. My friends screamed. They said, Go! My heart started pounding. I went. Then I slammed on the brakes. I stopped. I couldn't go. My friend said, what are you doing? What are you doing? I said, guys, we can't leave him. We got to go back. And they, they, they said, we can't get caught here. We're going to get in trouble for school. We can't get caught. <sighs> they left me. They abandoned me. I begged them not to. I ran to a payphone. Back in those days, we didn't have cell phones. I ran to a payphone. I called for help and I ran to the scene. I took my shirt off. I wrapped it around the man's head and told him it was going to be okay. And he died. He died in my arms. He died while I was looking into his eyes. I wish that on nobody. It's called post traumatic stress, where you think of a memory. And you relive it in your mind and you replay it. And you tell yourself, it was all my fault. It was all my fault. He died in my arms. And you replay the blood everywhere. There was blood everywhere. There was blood everywhere. And you replay just what you did. And you actually tell yourself a story while you're in peak state. I definitely was in peak state while I was experiencing it. And in thinking about these things, I got myself back into peak state while I told myself a story, a belief system. So many times we get ourselves in into a peak state and we tell ourselves a belief system. This person wronged me. I wronged myself. How will I ever forgive myself? I can't. I can't forgive myself because of this or that. What does your heart have to say about that? 
For years, I told myself this story, and time sort of buried the wound like sediment. Time buried the wound. I didn't think about it as much, therefore I didn't have as much pain. But the scar was there. The wound was definitely there. And I didn't heal for years. Until later on. I began to think about the event in a new light. I began to think about the event like someone else went through it. And I consulted myself. I kind of had a self-realization. We were all kids. And we're all older now. We could think back to ourselves with compassion. With empathy. Ah, oh, man, what did we know back then? We were just kids. Your belief system's different now than it was back then. Therefore, who are you? Are you your belief system? I'd like to think that we're more than our belief system. Therefore, you can change your belief system. I decided to take a conscious look at my belief system, what I believe to be true. Number one, I killed this man. Number two, it was all my fault. There was passerbyers, witnesses, that said that this man did this every day. And they just knew that one day there was going to be somebody that hit him. Well, that somebody was me. So I had to forgive myself for hitting this man. And I also had to forgive the man for using me to commit suicide. I didn't know if this man was unstable mentally or if he just had enough. So how did I do it? What's the recipe? Number one. You got to silence your mind. Your mind is going a thousand miles an hour, especially when it's trying to argue a position, positionality. This is my position. This is what I believe. Has somebody ever said something contrary to what you believe? All of a sudden, what? Your heart closes, your heart starts to speed up a little bit, and you're ready for your argument. You probably don't say it because you want to remain friends with the person that has a disagreement with you, but that's what usually what happens. Here's how to stop that from happening. Number one. Be conscious of your heart closing and say, ah, wait a minute here. Wait a minute. Don't close. Learn. What can I learn? Stay open. Stay open. To stay open, you have to be in the moment. Let's get in the moment together. Let's get in the moment. Take a deep breath. Focus on something right in front of you. Focus on your breath. Focus on the blood running through your body. Focus on your heartbeat. Can you feel your heartbeat? Try to feel your heartbeat. Once you feel your heartbeat, I want you to think about yourself outside of yourself. As a scared little kid. Think of the child version of yourself. And give that person a hug. This is powerful, so I'm going to say it again. Give the child version of yourself a hug. They're scared. Why don't you tell that person it's going to be okay? Tell yourself it's going to be okay. Take a breath and breathe life into the child version of yourself. This is the key to forgiveness. Once you have breathed life into the childlike version of yourself, and imagine yourself skipping around full of life, full of glee, like an innocent child. Yay! Running down the street, maybe with a, um, a treat of some kind. Or playing with your childhood friends. Imagine yourself happy. You deserve to be happy. Imagine your child self happy. Then once you've imagined your child self happy. Imagine your child self breathing life into you. Just like Peter Pan. Remember who you are. What's your happy thought? 
bring yourself back to innocence. You remember what it's like. You weren't always like this. Neither was I. There was a time before I believed what I believe now. You are not your thoughts. You're not your belief system. You're not your mind. You're not your body. You're so much more. Your mind is 99% quiet. 1% of it's talking. It's like a stadium that's empty and you have that one tiny little AM receiver. And it's just talking and talking and you're listening to it. You're focusing on the thoughts. Focus on the silence. It's only when you focus on the silence that you're able to free your mind. It's a beautiful experience. That's why meditation is so powerful. I want you to do something for me. I'm going to write this down. It's a how-to. It's, it's a how-to. How to forgive. Number one. Meditate daily. Now what I want you to do. I don't want you to light candles and say some foo-foo, rah-rah, la-la. Hamana, 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 hamana. I just want you to get in a comfortable position. Get comfy. Close your eyes. Just focus on your breath. This is how I learned. Okay? I just want you to focus on your breath for five minutes. That's it. Set a timer. Relax. Just focus on your breath. You're going to have everyday thoughts. They're going to come. Focus on your breath. Just close your eyes. Focus on your breath. It doesn't matter if you're hungry. It doesn't matter if you're tired. It doesn't matter if you're upset. I just want you to focus on your breath. Do this every day. Do this every day. In the shower, people wash their body. I wash my heart. I do the heart forgiveness practice where I imagine myself as a child. I fill that child up with glee, hope, joy, and I allow that child to speak into my life. That's how I forgive myself. That's how I love myself. I open my heart up from the past. Open it up. And just let go. You can't do it in one YouTube video. You can't do it in one meditation session. We are born free. And then we have these little cuts all over our bodies. Sores. Have you ever heard of a sore subject? You just don't bring up at the dinner table? Those are the cuts all around you. That you need to have your, your spiritual neosporin, so to speak. I could be that neosporin for you. I'm speaking love into your life right now. This is something that's new for me. I haven't been doing this professionally for many years. So I don't have a, you know, come to my website and, you know, for this much a month, I'll help you and teach you. But I am going to open my doors for you, as in you that's watching this video. To allow me into your life. Now, I'm thinking about doing phone calls. What I'm going to do is give you a free phone call. I'm going to give you one free hour. I'm not going to time it, but, you know, give you a free conversation. And I want you to talk to me. I want to know what's on your mind. I want to know that the, the pitfalls that you've experienced. I want to know the growth that you've experienced. I want to get to know each and every aspect of your life. So, just to recap, this is what we learned. You have to get into the moment. Meditate. You have to say, I'm enough. That's something that I haven't talked about in this video yet. You have to tell yourself that you are enough. That's a message that I'm sure you already have heard dozens of times. From mugs to superstars online. You are enough. It's true. But it's not something that you can just hear and go, ah, I'm enough. You have to put the Neosporin on the cut. It'll heal faster than it would have healed if you didn't have Neosporin. And you're telling yourself the false belief systems. Do those false belief systems really serve you? 
Next time you tell yourself something, ask yourself here, is what I said true? Or does my heart close when I say these things? Only say and do and think and go toward things that make your heart open and go away from and rebuke things that make your heart close. This goes from food to people you hang around with to the words you that you say, the words that you allow into your mind. I, I mute commercials. When I'm watching a movie with my family, I mute them. Because commercials allow whatever they want right into your mind. Guard the gateway of your mind. Because this is the gateway to your heart. My ultimate message. If you're not your mind... Who are you? Seriously, who are you? Write that down. I'm not in my mind. Your mind's the one that's telling you to hold on. I'm telling you, friend, let go. Let go. Slowly but surely. I have one last analogy for you. So, if you're firing a weapon at a target, what you have to do is you have to relax and you squeeze. And if you are resisting the motion of the gun, bang, what you're doing is you're pushing forward right before the gun fires. And people found this out when the gun would misfire. All you would get is a click and you would just put your hand forward. So, what enthusiasts started to do is put a fake round every once in a while in their chamber and they'd figure out where they're getting that resistance to the moment you see the connection now and they'd fix it that way friends I could go on and on about my near death experiences that's changed my life that's gave me the perspective that I have so many times in my life I thought I was going to die I thought, this is it. This is my last moment. I thought I was going to die of hypothermia. I thought I was going to die in a you know, gunshot. I didn't get shot, but I was, you know, I'm pretty sure I was going to. I thought I was going to die on my motorcycle. I thought I was going to die in a car crash. Motorcycle, I can attest to about maybe 10 or so times I almost died on a motorcycle. But I didn't. Here I am, speaking to you. What a mystery we're here together. So what do we do? What are you going to do for the rest of the day? I want you to write down things that excite you. Write down things that you could be joyful for. Change your day. Start your day with gratitude. It all starts with gratitude. How are you going to live the day? It's a conscious choice. Ultimately, you're not your mind. You're right here. You don't say, hey, here I am. You say, hey, I'm here. I'm here. Me. You are your heart. That's why you don't change answers at the end of a test. Because you know your first answer is the best answer. Stop resisting to the moment. And you'll hit your mark. So many times in life I've missed a mark, friend. So many times I've missed a mark. That's why I'm here sharing with you. Because I've realized this over and over and over. I was resisting to the moment. The key is being in the moment. That's the key. The key to anything. If you're feeling frustrated at yourself. Not being able to forgive. If something comes up. All of a sudden. Oh, you know, I'm this, I'm that. Rebuke those things. Say, you know what? No, I'm not going to accept that. I'm this and I'm that. Be positive to yourself. Stick up for yourself. So many of you listening, me included, have said negative things toward ourselves. Why? Why are we so negative towards the vessel that we walk around in? Why?
Friends, you deserve to be happy. You deserve life. You deserve joy. You deserve to be free. You deserve to forgive yourself. My message is simply this. Let go. Be in the moment. Fill yourself with joy. Allow your childlike self to fill you with love. Keep your heart open, consciously. I'll see you in the next one. I've got more of these videos to come. In my other mastermind classes, I have a video on how to forgive others. Um, I have a video on how to forgive others, how to forgive yourself. So join me. Join me on a journey. Let's meet. Let's meet. I, I want to do live classes. I want to do so much. There's so much that I want to share with you guys. There's so much that I wish to share. I hope this message reached you. I hope I touched your heart some way. Like I said, this isn't one video fix. This is a daily attribute. Do something daily for yourself. Self-love is the best love.